Ladies and gentlemen, AMD's next generation of GPUs may actually have a big advantage over NVIDIA, and that is that unlike NVIDIA, AMD will be utilizing the 2NM process node. NVIDIA, meanwhile, for RTX 60, or if you prefer, Rubin, it seems that they will indeed be leveraging TSMC's 3NM. Not only that, we have a couple of small updates concerning the uh, chiplets that will be comprising RDNA 5 gaming as well. And there are a few other things I want to talk to you about in this video, not least of which... Intel's Nova Lake processors are allegedly very impressive, not just for multi-thread performance, which you could make the assumption given they've got 52 cores, albeit that is a hybrid of performance, low power, and of course efficiency cores, but thanks to the additional cache that's going to be implemented, which is a little bit like the vCache technology, and just other architectural improvements, they may even be very competitive or perhaps even surpass Zen 6 for gaming. I'm going to talk to you about that because I've got a lot to say on that subject. That is after this quick message from the sponsor of the video. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. Okay, so now I can see because I've put my glasses on. Yeah, Daniel over here actually points this out. Lisa Sue dropped a bombshell, but no one caught it. AMD's MI450 will use the 2NM technology, while NVIDIA's Rubin will use 3NM. This is a massive power and efficiency advantage. Now, I would just put a little bit of an asterisk on that claim. We don't fully understand yet what AMD and NVIDIA's Rubin architectures are like. In other words, we don't know all of the architectural information, and so... It's not just like, oh, process good equal GPU better. It's more like, well, process is good, which is, it's kind of like having a good foundation. It's like if you're, I'm not like a constructor, so please, if you're like working construction, add more details below. But if you just have like a crappy foundation and then you start putting bricks down, you're not going to be too surprised when the builder goes, on the other hand, if you have a really good foundation, but then you make your building out of like, you know, paper mash, it's not also going to be particularly good either. So you will need obviously that like combination approach. With that said, MI450, actually everything I'm hearing about the next generation of AMD GPUs is really, 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 really good. Um, of course, we've already heard some details from AMD and Sony themselves concerning the next generation technologies. Data compression sounds really important. The fact that they actually have this new um, little chip, this core inside, which is going to be for ray tracing. Uh, it just sounds really, really cool. But Kepler L2 on Twitter also points out that we have the XCD, which is the accelerator core die, the active interposer die, and then the media interface die. And those are going to be on 2NM, 3, uh, or should I say N2P, three, uh, N3P, and then also N3P. Just for those who don't know, XCD, the accelerator core, that's going to um, house things like the compute units, you know, as the stream processors, the ray tracing, TMUs, all of that stuff that actually makes things happen on screen. The active interposer, well, I think that somewhat explains itself, and the media interface die. It's, it's really interesting, actually, because you can really see that AMD are very much adopting its modular design. And in fact... <laughs> It's, it's quite interesting because this was a little bit like what AMD were initially intending for RDNA 4 to be. I don't think they're going to be going dual um, compute dies anytime soon, or shall I say dual XCDs. I think basically the XCD itself is just going to be getting larger, so they're going to have different variants of that, and then they could just splice them together. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if like RDNA 6 onwards, honestly, from what I'm hearing... They've been experimenting with graphics. This is, I really want to stress as a rumor, 
but from what I'm hearing, AMD are already experimenting and have a lot of the, a lot of the complex. See, it's basically what I'm trying to say, guys, is a lot different just having a GPU which has, let's say, multiple compute dies doing things like AI or you know non-graphics things where latency isn't such a big deal but if you're rendering frames it becomes a lot more complicated and yeah but i'm from what i'm hearing amd have ironed out a lot of the problems uh, already for dual graphics they just don't necessarily want to pursue it yet yeah, and hopefully they will but i think for rdna6 they may well do I'll be very interested to see when NVIDIA jumps on because from what I understand, and hopefully I'm wrong about this, this is not from just a source, this is just, you know, kind of what I'm reading online, it seems that RTX 60 will, and I'm, again, I'm talking about the gaming variants here to be very clear, from what I'm seeing, RTX 60 does seem like it's just, you know, a standard monolithic die, and I do wonder how long NVIDIA feels that they can just keep squeezing that juice out of that lemon because ultimately there are limits. I mean, obviously... Uh, they could move to a 2nm refresh of RTX 60, maybe, or maybe they'll do it, wait for um, RTX 70 or something like that. Or, conversely, maybe at that point they will indeed decide with RTX 70 to go on MCM. I'll be very interested. Um, then again, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of speculation you can have on that. Speaking of speculation, let's hop, skip, and jump our way to Nova Lake, shall we? So the next generation, we've talked about it already. Uh, I, I leaked way back in the day a lot of the specifications for Nova Lake, and of course now, uh, the only difference is I did get a little bit slightly wrong with my initial leaks. I basically said that the um, the tile, you know, the cache tile is potentially only going to be on one of the compute tiles, and it seems like it might be across two. So each one has a um, its own uh, cache tile, but regardless, um, here we can see Silicon Fly is doing some speculation. My conservative estimates versus Arrow Lake 285K. He says 1.2x. This is, by the way, in Geekbench, and I'll add a little bit of an asterisk after that as well. Multi-thread performance is around 2.2. This is because of 52 cores. It should easily surpass Zen 6 and Apple M4 in Geekbench single, and may go against Apple N5 will easily surpass Zen 6 and Apple M5 in multi-core due to 55, 52 cores. God, I can't speak. I hate those days. Um, and finally, Nova Lake will easily match or surpass Zen 6 in gaming due to the BLLC, again, which is that cash tile that we've discussed previously. Nova Lake is going to be huge. Now, allegedly, these are optimistic figures. Uh, by the way, this is a newer post. This was on the 13th. There's a slightly newer one as well that I'll read in just a second. This post is on the 13th. And he also goes a little bit further here and does a little bit more speculation. I'm not going to read out all of these, but by comparison, Zen 5 already has AVX and X3D. So this is basically him uh, justifying and going through like mentally why he thinks that Geekbench is going to do so well. Now... Here are a couple of points I would like to bring up, and I'm sure some of you are already furiously typing this in the comments. So wait. Firstly, Geekbench 6, it does actually very much like certain CPU instructions, and those instructions don't necessarily improve gaming performance for the sake of discussion. And also, naturally, Geekbench 6 just as a whole is not necessarily representative of what you might do, so there is that. With that said, I think Zen 6 is going to be a very interesting architecture. I don't personally think it's going to hit more than like low 6 gigahertz. It's really hard to know. Um, from everyone I've spoken to, they are estimating like 6 to 6.2, maybe 6.3 if it's single thread and you like do a little bit of optimization on the motherboard, but it's really hard to know. I don't think anyone is truly aware at the moment of what the final figures are, because even if you have a target, a target can be beaten or it could be surpassed or they could just fail dismally. But yeah, I, I personally suspect for the Zen 6 architecture, uh, for Ryzen anyway, for desktop, I don't imagine it's going to be much more than like low 6 gigahertz. I would love for it to be more, but I think AMD are probably doing the right thing because they also want some measure of efficiency as well. Um, and the reality is that I think Zen 6, because it's going to have those IPC gains, you know, the rumor is around 10 to 15%, that's what I've heard as well, plus higher clock frequencies, plus, and this is the really big key, 
just the overall improvements on the IOD and all the other stuff that they are going to be implemented, plus, of course, more memory bandwidth, I suspect they're going to do really well. The problem is for both Intel and AMD is actually feeding them. Now, it's really easy to say, well, 52 cores go brr, but if you don't have enough data to feed those cores, yeah, obviously the additional cache is going to help. I just, I personally, and I, I, I don't know, I, I don't have, um, you know, I, I don't have my little peepers over some dude who's working on the uh, Nova Lake processor, like, excuse me, how are you doing? Um, so, you know, maybe I'm wrong. But uh, I, I just don't see a 2.2x improvement. Uh, that would be really good. I just don't see that um, in terms of memory bandwidth. I would love to be proven wrong. I would love to be proven wrong. I could certainly imagine, however, the single thread performance for the P cores hitting like 1.2x in Geekbench. I could certainly imagine that because, again, you do have those additional... Um, uh, you do have those additional instructions, plus I imagine they're going to have some clock speed improvements, plus the architecture is really good. Actually, from what I'm hearing with Nova Lake, while the P cores are decently improved, the E cores are actually really good. So it's going to be very interesting for the multi-thread performance, I think. Also, uh, I just wanted to scroll down for this one. I wanted to point this out. So this was a slide that I actually covered back in the day. And you can see here that they are stating leadership gaming performance. This is from Humph. Now, I, I, as I said, I did cover this and it was floating around. I can't remember how many months ago. You might recognize it. But anyway, ultimate performance and efficiency. Leadership gaming performance, 1.1x higher single thread and 1.6x multi-thread. Now, notice here Silicon Fly is saying, well, this is actually Pamphlet, not Nova Lake. And at the time when I was covering this, there was a lot of confusion of what it was. I, I myself in the video, I'm pretty sure said, well, you know, people are saying it's Nova Lake. I can't really get a straight answer. Um, but yeah, I, I personally wouldn't be surprised if it was Pamphlet. And from what I've heard so far, Pamphlet is what most people are leaning towards. But obviously, at the end of the day, it's a leak. So for all we know, it's made up anyway. Um, you know, it's not too difficult to create something like this. But allegedly, it is an accurate slide. But again, who's to know with this stuff? I'll leave it down to you guys to argue about that in the comments below. However, I do think that there is a pretty good chance that this is going to inform at least some of what we can expect for the next generation with that said i will be very interested if intel can be very competitive and i do want intel to be competitive because <sighs> it's just been it's been really sad um to see what intel have become and you know i say that because i, I you know intel at the end of the day um they were an amazing company for a while they, they did some incredible stuff um and it's really interesting, actually, to go back historically and look at in older Intel architectures. Like, um, uh, if you're if you're really old like me, you might remember like 386 and 486, and uh, you know the old uh, what was it, Pentium, Pentium MMX. Then I think the Pros came out, or was it the Pro then the MMX? I can never remember the order. And then obviously you basically had the Pentium two, and then it just you know all of that time Intel were doing incredibly well. You had Cyrix and AMD, of course. I had the uh, K62 300 and something megahertz. I think it's 366 or something like that for AMD. And oh my goodness, it was so great back then. Um, obviously, AMD had kind of rely on the 3D Now instructions, but even so. And then Intel, uh, then Intel and AMD, you know, they kind of were doing a lot of back and forth. If you recall, like the um, early Athlons, like the K7s and the uh, K8s, like the Athlon 64s, the Durons, blah, blah, blah. There was a lot of back and forth. And Intel, you know, AMD were kind of, you know, kind of kicking each other in the shins. But then at some point, Intel just ran away, which sucked for the industry because it just wasn't good for AMD to basically be completely and utterly on the back foot. And now, obviously, it's the reverse. Intel, I think, have actually made some improvements. Um, the main thing, and, you know, kudos to AMD. AMD did some really smart things. They did, they made some really, really big bets, actually, that obviously the whole chiplet thing is one. The fact that they were just audacious and daring enough to do the you know the the x3d chips and bring them out was very smart and just outside of that the actual architecture of the cpu themselves are really good 
Uh, the original Zen had a few weaknesses here or there, Zen Plus slightly improved that with some um, tighter ta uh, cache and I can't even remember. I think it's improvements in memory control. It's been so long, guys, you have to remind me. And then obviously, you know, Ryzen 3000 series, it was just like, oh my god, 16 cores on the desk, like, like what the actual hell? What is this? And then obviously AMD just pretty much started to run away with it. So are we very interested to see what the next generation is shaping up like? Oh, um, before I let you all go, I just wanted to let you know that we have actually started a new channel. So this channel is going to continue. Um, it's not going to be changing. We're still going to be doing the same content and all that stuff. The difference is the new channel, I want to kind of do more fun projects, uh, silly projects, stuff that doesn't necessarily fit the tone on RGT. It's still going to be computer based, of course. Um, I just recently did a kind of a fun project with an older processor where I was testing uh, basically how much of an upgrade you would get on a 5060 Ti versus a 1080. I also did uh, NVIDIA Smooth Motion Frames. There's a bunch of other uh, cool content that's going to be coming up soon with some older AMD GPUs. And yeah, it's basically just going to be a little bit more fun, a lot more relaxed. So do subscribe if you want. I will leave a link to Resample Pixels in the description of this video. With that said, guys, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.